so I have a quickie today. I placed an order on Dior's website for their newest backstage eye palette. Well, there were two, I believe, that came out, but there was one that I was very, very interested in. And a lot of you knew I would be interested in this. A lot of you let me know that this was available. And yes, I picked it up. So this is the new Dior backstage eye palette in the shade Khaki Neutrals. Now, they also did launch Burgundy as well. This one I felt was quite repetitive. I felt like I had a lot of palettes like this in my collection. I mean, I, I have a lot of palettes like the khaki one too. I wanted more <laughs> of the greens. So I did pass on the burgundy, but I'm excited because I really do feel like in Dior's backstage eye palette line, they've never come out with one with these colors. You can get these on the Dior website, which is where I ordered from. I love ordering from the Dior website because they come so nicely packaged, really luxurious. But the caveat is returning is kind of a pain in the butt. So when it breaks, it's very, very annoying. But when it doesn't come broken, it is such a treat. You can also pick this up from Sephora as well or hold off until the sale at the end of the month. But this palette is $49. You get nine shades in here. And I have a couple of these. I don't have the whole collection, but I do enjoy them. They're very wearable palettes, all of them. But this one stood out to me. I think looking at all of the ones that they have, this is the one that I think is the prettiest, to my opinion. Now, this one is limited edition, supposedly. Supposedly, that's what it says online. So if you do want to get it, make sure you get your hands on it. And I think what I like about the Dior Backstage line is the prices are a little bit more approachable for a Dior item, especially if you do order it from the website, you do get that Dior experience. I mean, $50 for an eyeshadow palette is not cheap, but it's a better value than a lot of their other cosmetic products. Here is the box that it's going to come in. And then when you turn it to the back, it explains the colors right here. I mean, the idea of this is it's supposed to work backstage in a makeup artist kit, especially with the packaging right here. You can see because it's clear, it's easy for a makeup artist to pull out of their kit. It has an eye primer, top coats, glitters, some things you can use for liner. There's just a lot to it. That's kind of the idea behind this line and I've loved it. The Dior backstage line has been around for a few years now. I think it was such a great addition to their line. I think the products are just more young and fresh and approachable. So here's what the eyeshadow palette looks like. Of course, with greens being so trendy right now, I was excited. I felt like online this looked a little bit more green. And then in person, it did lean a little bit more neutral. But it still is a really pretty neutral-ish kind of palette with the green pops in here. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. So let's just go ahead and swatch it, shall we? So lights are down. We're going to start off here. These palettes typically have a primer. I don't really actually use these ever, but I'll use them today. And that's just gonna be right here. It's not bad, but it's just kind of there. I wish it was an eyeshadow instead. Okay, let's finish up the top row. So we have this pearly white kind of shade and then this one right here. So this is a top coat in pearly white. Very pretty. Look at that glitter. Okay, I really like this one already. And then we have a satin shade, which is a golden tan. Ooh, that top coat looks stunning. Going into the middle row next. I'm ruining all of the nice Dior embossments in the eyeshadow band. So this is a satin warm gold, just warmer. And this is a glitter shade in pure gold. It's not as glittery as the top coat. And then we have a metal shade, which is an emerald, which is kind of like a soft satin. I would more so describe it as. Yeah, so they say that these two are also glitter shades. They're not really glittery. They're like shimmery, <laughs> but not even like satiny shimmery. Anyways, this is what they look like. Oof, this row, gorgeous. I can't wait to play with this. So we have what they describe as a glitter shade. You can see it's clearly not glitter, but this is khaki. Then we have a satin warm brown and a pine green, which is supposed to be the glitter formulation. I know the swatches look a little funky, fear not. Swatches do not tell the whole story. I do not swatch for aesthetics. I swatch to get a feel for the formula so you can tell that these aren't going to have a strong pigment but will most likely be buildable. So let's see, but this is the palette. I think it's a really approachable avenue to greens. Stays pretty neutral. There's not any like neon greens in here. They're just more so accent colors, but let's go ahead and play around and see what we can do with this. Okay, this was a fun experience. I'm gonna share it with you. So we're gonna start off with the primer. Now, the primer does give a little bit of coverage. You know, 
I think I like this. I normally, in the past, didn't like this, didn't use it, didn't go for it. I wish there was a cover since it is exposed to loose powder particles. But at least this first use, like, nice, you know? It gives me a blank canvas, but it's not too strong of a color or coverage. Just evens everything out getting it ready for makeup. And the first shade I'm going into is the khaki shade. It's just so interesting that they call this a glitter when it's a satin shade. You literally can use it as an all-over crease color. This has a lot of pigment so make sure you use light pressure and tap off your brush. But this is going to be the guide and slash transition to the look to keep the khaki running through. I'm also going to just run this along my entire lower lash line as well. This is a Luxie 229 brush. It's a really good brush. With the Refer number 14 brush, we're going into this shade right here, which is more of a neutral brown. It's great that this is in here for you neutral lovers because one, this shade has a little bit of a green tone to it. So it blends in so nicely with the green colors in here here. But it's a great way to neutralize the greens if you want to use green but are a little bit intimidated because you can see that went from a pretty strong khaki color to a very nice brownish green. So I think neutral lovers, this is going to be a great option for you. Going to go back into a little bit of khaki again. It looks a little messy. We'll work it out. I'm going to clean it up. I just want to make sure the blend is smooth. Then we are going to go into with a Refer 13 brush this shade right here. This is the brightest green in the palette so I really wanted it to stay very green. So I'm keeping this in the eye socket area right here. I'm not going too high with it but do you see how that added I just threw my brush on the ground. Do you see how that added a nice green element? The shade is so pretty. These shades are just working out so sophisticated. And I went with a pretty bright look today because I wanted to see the capabilities of the screen, but all of these can be toned down. And then we are going into the darkest green. It's a little powdery, so I'm doing this not near my outfit. <laughs> And I'm going to run this along the outer half of my lower lash line. And then I'm focusing it in the outer quarter of my eyelid. Then we're going to blend out and up to create a cat eye effect. At least for me, that's what's most flattering on me and my eye shape. Take a clean brush and blend it all out. So now let's start adding in the fun bits, the brightness. So I'm going to go into this mustardy shade which I think would make a really gorgeous transition color. It doesn't have too much shimmer in there. It has enough. This is a very flattering palette for mature eyelids by the way just based on the formula. You guys are going to love this because it does have shimmers but they're not going to be emphasizing you know micro fine lines. And I'm also just going to run this on the inner third right here because I love how this adds that yellow tone to it. It really pops against the green. I would not do these next parts if I were you if you're recreating this look but this is just for testing purposes. I'm gonna go ahead and go into this champagne shade and this is gonna be the inner corner highlight. Oh you can do this step. This step is fine. It's a very smooth satin shade. It's a great element in this palette. It's like that and I had to play with this glitter topper here but in this look I really wouldn't want to put this here. This is gonna go great if you really mess with the green tones. It looks a little chalky on top of the look I have today but I did just want to see how this would look. What I wish is this wasn't so white. I wish it had some warmth to it or a little bit of green in there so that it would go with a lot more colors because you can see how it just didn't make the look as pretty. So I wish the tone of it was different. The finish of it is gorgeous. If you pick a couple of the green tones in the crease and put this all over the lid it's going to be stunning but it just looks white but you can see though the glitters are really really pretty I do like this formula just not in this palette with the color that it is so that I sh I'm showing you for testing purposes so you can see the finish it's really really pretty just doesn't go at least with the look that I created today so I'm gonna go in I'm gonna redefine the colors that I want to show up like I want a little bit more of the gold to pop through so I'm gonna put that right on top 
But I mean, short and sweet, I purposefully tried to use a bunch of shades in today's look, but you can get some really simple, gorgeous looks with this palette. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean up this edge, put on some liner and mascara, and we'll finish this review up. It's a short one today, but I wanted to play with this on camera so bad. Okay, so here's the final look. It's a weird mix of colors. I'm playing with the new Patrick Ta blush palette because I don't think I like it. Um, didn't really go with my eye look and my lips. I don't know what happened here. It didn't mean for it to run so cool, but I actually love this lip combination, just not with a green look. Anyways, whatever, you don't care. Let's get into the important part, the palette. I mean, I really, really like this palette. Now this is a sophisticated green is what I would call it. This is for people who like neutrals, but want a pop of green, you know? It's not gonna be neon, crazy, vibrant green. It's gonna give you a sophisticated green look. You know, I, I went for it. I added as many greens and pops as I could, but this could easily be dulled down. I just wanted to see the capabilities of this palette and I'm very, very happy. I think the formula is gonna be great for mature eyelids. It was very easy to use. Everything felt very high quality, very luxury to me. So overall, if you like this color story, you like the vibes of the palette, I do recommend this and I am very happy about it. And I'm happy that I decided to just make a whole dedicated video on this. Normally I don't like to for such a small thing, but it is a really nice palette and I am very, very happy with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review and found it helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel for more. I have a review on the not so new anymore Patrick Todd Cheek palette coming tomorrow. I just thought, why not? <laughs> and I didn't really like it. So make sure you stay tuned for that and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys. Have a good one.